So I recently saw that there's a new Time Loop movie on Netflix, and I love Time Loop movies. It stars a guy that looks like the guy from Arrow, so I watched it. Now let's talk about it. there's a new Time Loop movie on Netflix starring that guy that looks like the guy from Arrow. Well, I like Time Loop movies. I like that guy that looks like the guy from Arrow. So I watched it. Now I'm going to talk about it. I feel like I've said some of this before. Anyway, Ark is a Time Loop story that's a home invasion story set in a post-apocalyptic setting. So it's very much in a contained environment. It's very much a bottle story. See, a bottle story on a TV show is when they'll have an episode set in only one location so that they can save money for other episodes. So that's where you're watching the sitcom and they're stuck in an elevator. It's easy to film. It's cheap to film. And therefore, they do that so they can have a more extravagant episode elsewhere. A bottle film is where the movie, because they have a low budget, decide to shoot it in one location. This is why a lot of first-time filmmakers do a cabin in the woods horror movie. It's one location, very small cast, very small crew. It's very easy to shoot. Or the story that's set in, say, for example, a hotel room with like three characters talking, and it's basically a filmed play. That's a bottle story, and that's what this movie is, except it's a sci-fi bottle story with a time loop element to it. Without wanting to say too much about the story, basically in the beginning of it, two people wake up, immediately three people break into their home, and within minutes, one of them is shot and killed, and the day repeats. That's the setup, and that's really what you need to know. So as for the good, what I loved about this is the story flow works much better than you think it would. When it first started off, in the first five minutes, I was like, I'm going to get really annoyed by this really fast if this doesn't start changing it up a little bit. And immediately it does. And they start having twists very early on, so you have progress in the story, even though the story keeps looping back on itself. Which is a really neat storytelling technique, because in the one sense, it's the same thing over and over, but at the same time, you feel progress and you feel movement. So like in the movie Groundhog's Day, Groundhog Day, which of course people will compare this to it, in that you don't feel forward progress because the progress in the story is entirely character development. And so when it starts to feel like it's looping a bit too much, you can actually feel that a little bit more because it's character development. And then it, the story progresses forward. Here, the actual story progresses as these people are figuring out what's going on. It moves forward forward. Now, it's also cool about that with each new loop, you get new information about what's going on. At the very first loop of it, you just are thrown right into the action right away and you don't know the context, the world around them. So that's one of the things they do really smartly is instead of like over explaining everything and assuming you're stupid, they slowly give you information. So you're paying attention to each line of dialogue to figure out how do these two people know each other? What's the world going on around them? Do these people that are breaking in know them? Why is this happening? And you learn that with each new cycle through the loop as you these dialogue continues on and you learn more about what's going on. Likewise, they use the different loops to give you different perspective on the same event. So these people are trying to get out of this home invasion situation, so they do different things with each different time loop, and through that you see the same event from a, th from a different perspective, which makes for a very interesting take on what's going on. The writers are very smart in knowing that there's a lot of potential for it to just feel repetitive, because it literally is repetitive, and so they keep putting new wrinkles into the mix every about 10 minutes. There's something new where you go, oh, okay, now this is, I think I see where it's going. And every time you think you know where it's going, it changes up just a little bit more. And there's some new reveal about the characters, the situation, the motivations, the rules of the engagement of what's going on. And it moves very quickly and has a very nice, swift pace to it in that regard. I think the actors did a good job being likable and relatable while not having a whole lot to work with because obviously they're trapped in a very small window of time and a very single location in a single emotional intensity. And so those are the good things about the story. So before I go into the bad, what I want to do real quick is answer the simple question, is it a ripoff? Because I looked in the comment section of the trailer and naturally there are a whole bunch of people saying, it's just a ripoff of source code. It's the same It's just a ripoff of Edge of Tomorrow. The day's, the day's repeating. It's just a ripoff of Groundhog Day. It's just a ripoff of that episode of Star Trek The Next Generation movie, 1201. So if you're one of the people thinking that way, first off, seriously. Second, if that's the first reaction that you had to the trailer to this or the idea of this and you can't move past that, you're not going to like this movie. If just all you see is time loop and you went, I've seen a time loop story before, 
you're not going to like this. Third, a time loop is a plot device. Let's look at the definition of this. A plot device can be anything which moves a plot forward. A movie is not ripping off another movie simply because they share a plot device. Every movie that has a drug bust is not ripping off every previous movie with a drug bust. That's just a plot device. A spouse dying in the first act is a plot device, but every movie where a spouse dies isn't ripping off every movie that came out before that where a spouse dies in the first act. That's simply not how it works. See, no one who's thinking straight would think that Back to the Future is ripping off The Terminator simply because The Terminator came out first and it involves time travel and parents. They're obviously very different stories. One involves time traveling to the 50s in a DeLorean to invent Johnny B. Good. The other one is about cyborgs traveling through time to win a war. They're different stories, even though they both have the same plot device of time travel. Granted, a time loop is a very distinct plot device that creates kind of a similar story structure, so naturally it is a more limited plot device that draws stronger comparisons, but Groundhog Day is about a selfish weatherman who keeps repeating days to learn how he can stop being selfish? Uh, source Code is about a train wreck. Edge of Tomorrow is about an alien invasion and guys putting on mech suits. And this movie is about a home invasion. They obviously have wildly different plots, but they have a similar plot device. That's how you appropriately use a plot device. You use it in a new context with a new genre. Therefore, there's a freshness and a new way of using this old idea. That's called innovation. That's what movies do all the time. With all that said, there are some bad things about this movie. First off, in only 90 minutes, because of the scale of the film and the budget they had, there wasn't really anywhere else to go, and you could feel them running out of steam towards the end of it, and you're like, all right, I think we're about done with this story. As I mentioned earlier, you can feel the repetition quite a bit early on before it really starts to get its stride and start to move forward. It definitely feels repetition in the first 15 or so minutes. Throughout the film, you can tell that this is a movie that had limited resources going into it. I read an article, it was shot in 19 days for less than $2 million, and you can really feel that. Throughout the whole thing, there's like a clock that you see, and I was watching it the whole time thinking, oh, I've seen an After Effects tutorial on how to do that. I've kind of made something like that before. And you feel that throughout it. It all looks good. It doesn't look bad. It's just you can tell that they had low, limited resources. Two final things. First off, this is very much a genre film. It's post-apocalyptic, sci-fi, time travel, time loop, home invasion. That's so niche. <laughs> if, if you hate any one of those things in there, you're not going to like the movie. And so because of that, it's for a very specific group of people. So if you watch the trailer and you really like it, you're probably going to really like this movie. If you see the trailer and you go, oh, that's going to get old fast it probably will get old fast for you. Next thing is the ending of this movie. Because it's a time loop movie, whenever you have like these sci-fi type questions where it's unanswered, you always have some debates where they give away too much, too little. Is it satisfying? Is it not satisfying? Do you want more mystery? Do you want less mystery? In the ending of this one, that's exactly what you're going to feel. It's the type of movie that it ends and you want to talk about it with the person you just watched it with. Overall, I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10. I really enjoyed watching it. I enjoyed seeing the story unfold and the twists and the turns, but I'm not going to re-watch it on my own, really. However, to be honest, I would love to be able to show it to some of my friends that like time loop movies and time travel movies just to introduce it to them and see what they think about it so we can talk about it afterwards. One final comment. I watched the trailer about a week before I watched the movie. And when I watched the movie, there were some things I thought were going to be big spoilers that they ended up really not being spoilers. It was all stuff that was in the first act of the movie. So it didn't spoil it. However, I rewatched the trailer right before doing this review so I could comment on it as I'm doing right now. And there is some stuff in there that actually is spoilers. I just forgot about it after I watched the trailer. So I'd recommend not watching more than like the first minute of the trailer for this movie. So what's your favorite time loop movie? I I love Edge of Tomorrow and Groundhog Day. They both use the concept so well. What do you think? Tell me in the comment section because I don't want to just talk about movies. I want to talk about movies with you. Try and introduce me to one I've never even heard of before. I would love to discover one and watch it next week. If you're new to my channel and you've never clicked that subscribe button, please consider clicking that subscribe button. If you like the sound of my voice, thank you much for watching. I recently saw this is a new time loop movie on Netflix. I love time loop movies. I love movies starring that guy that looks like the guy from Arrow, so I watched it. Now let's talk about it. I recently saw that there's a new time loop movie starring the guy that looks like the guy from Arrow, and I love time loop movies. I love Netflix, so I watched it, and now I'm going to talk about it. 
So I recently saw that there's a new Time Loop movie on Netflix, and it stars that guy that looks like the guy from Arrow. I like Time Loop movies. I like that guy that looks like the guy from Arrow. So I watched it, and now I'm going to talk about it. I recently saw that there's a new Time Loop movie on Netflix starring that guy that looks like the guy from Arrow. Well, I like Time Loop movies. I like that guy that looks like the guy from Arrow. So I watched it, and now I'm going to talk about it. I recently saw that there's a new Time Loop movie on Netflix starring that guy that looks like the guy from Arrow. I like Time Loop movies. I like the guy that looks like the guy from Arrow. So I watched it. Now I'm going to talk about it.